Looks like Celery's down here as well, just to safeguard some of these bounty runes. And of course, Viper against the Ember Spirit mid, as GPK takes on Boom. And Shad, the final one up at top on that Faceless Void, gets himself a sentry down to block the large camp early on. Try and stop any of the nonsense up there. Look at my boy Shadow Shaman. He's the frog himself. Like, this could imply something. Well, because he's got the big green sticky the tongue and the frog face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, okay, maybe the runes? Aramis is the ice frog. Hmm. He knows or what's coming up next. Shadow Shaman will get you some buffs. So, so damn dead, I'd shoot you again. Does a little patch dance. Gets himself ready for tomorrow. Shadow oh, Shaman was so unusable before that we had to give him like 20 extra starting damage just to feel better. <laughs> yeah, 78. Oh, jeez. Like he's got actually 80 max damage, you know, the 73 to 80 spread. Now let's start there laying off very simply. Epic Kid just drags the wave back into his range creep, trying to get that deny on it early on. And up top we see. DM shockwaving early on to get his own range creep. And it's Wind Ranger with Blightstone. A faceless Void, the one thing he really hates to play against is that little you know, tickles of damage over time. And Wind Ranger, very good at doing that. Yeah, especially with the Blightstone, just the lower is the armor. But back to the bottom lane, Witch Doctor, scaling Voodoo Restoration level one. Once again, the secure Phantom Assassin's lane. giving Toby the punches. Man, boom. We've already seen him drop to like 100 HP, spamming out tangos as best he can. This lane for GPK seems super simple. Just right click and spam spells onto boom. Break through that flame guard if you can. And he's got the magic damage to do it. Running out of mana though for GPK. That's down bottom. There's pressure on the Ilias first blood and Toby. First blood is mid lane. Yeah, the fairy fire's there. One, One more hit. GPK gets it. Takes down the Ember Spirit. With a poison twist. Like, because he brought that extra two mangoes, it allowed him to play this aggressively. Whoa, look at it go! Like, what, what does Ember do now? Because, uh, you know, I wanted the Necro, and it feels like a similar thing here, where Viper is just dominating in this lane. And Ember Spirits against Necro, they used to kind of play between Tier 2 and Tier 3 to cut the wave. Yeah, this is something that the Viper really does well, just completely dominates the lane, and Verse Pro is heavily focusing on that. Uh, so Ember Spirit probably needs the jungle. If Viper pushes out the lane, then he can show up on mid. Otherwise, it's going to be really tough, especially now with the bottle pickup from GPK. Yeah, boom. Oh, dear. The hits just keep on coming. And then down to Bull's bottom, it looks like Viking have cleared out that big wave that arrived on their tower. There's another one here. Ilias not doing any pulling or stacking or anything, just continuing to play under the Dire Tier 1, trying to keep the pressure on Toby and Aramis. Well, pull this large camp now, right? Yeah, Ilias going to try and drag it back. Well, actually, Epi Kid plays forward, making sure the Shadow Shaman doesn't get any free don't contest on it, while DM. DM dropping their celery with a cookie. That kill, like that's a core Magnus, and position five salary. Radiance top tower gets the kill, gets level three. Now they can start playing uh, more aggressively. Shackles on bottom. Toby's there with the bashes and the crush, and they've got the ether shock. Elias down. Can't leave Zeppy kid all alone here. That's the Phantom Strike back to his creep wave. Aramis also had ten magic stick charges. He uses it straight away just to replenish mana because. All his spells are pretty costly. Like this shackles, shackles effect is so good. This is probably one of the best ones in the game. Yeah, and it's level two. He's maxing it out for now. A play forward with a maledict and the cask. Ilias. Oh, there's shackles there. Look at that. The long sticky tongue of Aramis catching him out. Toby's still getting dived a bit there, but he pops the fairy fire and he'll be fine. <laughs> Now good that damage I'm from VP or mid lane. Middle tower is under uh -huh. I think that's not a frog. That's a chameleon, right? Yeah, very true. That makes sense. And it, it could be a frog as well. I think there's some frogs with those sticky tongues. What's, what's the... Does it have a name? Lash of the Lizardkin. So lizard, yeah. 
kind of implies that it's a chameleon, right? Yeah. Get that sticky tongue to catch some flies. Dyer's and the spirit. Because the hiding in the trees. Show. Look at him, he can't do anything. Dyer's structures Might show possible. and just TP out. Like, this is it. Because GPK has, has a haste room, just needs one CS to get level 6. Jukes him around the trees. Down bottom lane though, Aramis. Do find the kill on Ilias there and trying to deny himself to neutrals, but that dagger from Epi Kid secures the deal. And bounty rooms all spawning up, save in onto the Grandma top lane. Cookie to the high ground, Celery's out of there, while Boom dies to GPK mid lane. Everywhere there's action as the bounty rooms spawn and are being grabbed up. And he steals the bounty rune from them. This one's tough. I said that they have Ember Spirit who can play aggressive, create chaos. It's gonna be a rough game for Ember considering the start that he's having. And now Windranger even coming, so he TPs in, 1-1-1 one, one, one build on Windranger, the Shackle. Could just get a kill. I, I don't Dyer's think Ember wants to come back to this lane. So this should be a TP tower. Yeah, like he can't TP. Blightstone Windranger hammering into the tower. New creep wave coming in to save the cast bolt as well. GPK just takes out that creep wave. So an easy tier one. That's going to open up this map nicely. While Boom Dyer's still relegated to jungling. Has and now all of the pressure that you've put on this bottom lane. Like sure, RMS and Toby, they're going to try and find Ilias again. Shackles up, move in with a bash on the crash. So they should find the witch doctor quite simply. No rotations coming. I thought maybe Viper and Windranger would come down here, but they are killing Boom in the mid lane instead. Tragedy strikes for the third time. Dyer's middle tower Boom, is under tipping attack. GPK. I mean, he has nothing better to do at the moment, just sitting in the fountain, so... Shackles. And a bash. Toby's holding the crush for the very last second, but it means that Epi Kid gets the Phantom Strike out, and now GPK, the rotation in. Regen rune being held, and he'll just right-click into RMS. Yeah, GPK so dominating. Pop, pop the Regen rune, uh, give two bottle charges to Phantom Assassin. Like, this feels such a good Viper game. He might actually he not finish Road of Athos, might go for Boots of Travel, and uh, it's, it's more of a greedy build. Oh, Toby needs to be careful. And DM also needs to be careful up top. Skewers into the Roche Pit. Does get away from that Void and the Snapfire. And GPK back towards the mid lane. Dyer Observer Ward sees... Uh, sorry, Radiant Observer Ward sees Boom, but Dyer sees GPK coming in. So Ember Spirit will be able to dip. Still reasonably close looking at the kill score and the net worth. It's just the fact this Viper is not a hero you can contend with by any means. And Shad strikes again. Hand of Might is queued up. Just wants to play for the late game. You know, get those levels on Faithless Void. Seems like the best thing they can do. Man really loves free gold, free experience. <laughs> he really does. Well, it looks like Epi Kid, Mask of Man is there with Empower level 3. Magnus moves into the mid lane, allows Epi Kid to farm jungle, and they've kept Viper down bottom, really alleviating a lot of that strength that Toby and Aramis were bringing down there. Viper strike in onto the Slardar, and they're going to catch him with a cask. Hex and Shackles ready from Aramis, but Toby's already dead. Rotation from Celery, not going to really accomplish too much because the cast ball wave's here. And this is something that British Pro does really well. You know, they're just maximizing the amount of farm on the map. If you look at their ancient camp, Dyer's they used two sentry wards to just de ward. There was one sentry blocking the ancient camps just to get the stacks going. Is Boom gonna get RP'd here? Jump in from the PA. RP! Oh! oh. Second Fake one. pumped it okay. twice. Deary me. Well played by Boom, though. He does get himself out of that. Looked like a for sure death. And he's straight back in towards DM in the mid lane, but PA farming Dire Triangle at this point, while it looks like Celery's trying to stack at the same time. Also save, just collecting XP on the top lane and stacking both Ancient Camp and the Big Camp. Denied. 
That's max. They're gonna move on to Viper. Atos and Viper. They're gonna catch the GPK. He's got Atos coming out, and he turns the fight into Toby. Down to half HP. The cookie comes, and the shackles are there. But Toby's dying. He's dropping so fast. He pops the wand. The GPK. He's level nine, and he is super tanky. Now with the Chrono, though, Toby's caught up inside this. Boom's arrived, and GPK does get the finish onto Celery. The snap is down with bashes from Shad. Secure the six X kill streak. And GPK finally dropping and paying for his sins. They had to rotate five heroes to kill GPK. Use a Chronosphere on top of that. Meanwhile, Phantom Assassin just farming the stacks that Viking made. Yeah, exactly. Meanwhile, in PA land, what she got coming? That's not an, even her land. She invaded. Oh, well, it's hers now. Bottom tower. Places her flag down in it. Shockwave onto the Usurper. All right. Maledicted Shadow Shaman. Trying to run away, and they've also got the Shackle catching Shan. GPK finishes him off. Toby slowed down, but sprinting. Ilias can't catch up. He throws the Death Ward in, but oh, not enough damage to finish off Toby. He still had six one charges anyway. Optimistic attempt. Sure. Power shot. Save. Gave it a good crack. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Viking though, fighting back. How's Boom doing? Like he, he's recovering slowly. Vort dropped with the catapult. Snapfire is level six. They need to bring numbers. Like like they need three four heroes to actually defend this Aramis. He changed there on the GPK, on the epic kid. And it jumps straight onto Celery. Try to cookie away, but that Maladic is going to bust through all the HP remaining. They get the tier one and they TP Shadow Shaman out, though. I mean, not too bad. Position five for a tier one tower on mid. Shad just completed his hand of Midas, just needs to deliver the recipe. But bottom lane, GPK is going to get another tower for himself. Throwing nether toxin onto the tower before the creep wave even comes. Dyer's bottom Not sticking around. Looks like he wants to try and take that large stack as well. Not looking awful for Viking though. They've still got opportunities here with Chrono back up in 30. Snapfire's level 6 now, so the Mortimer's Kisses. You don't even really need the, uh, the Chrono for it, right? Because you've got Shadow Shaman with Shackles. Yes, you do. And every single time I see fan, uh, PA farming the ancient stacks, like she has M power, and then Magnus also gets quite a lot of farm. Like uh, he's uh, same farmed as the enemy offlaner. Yeah, that Slada, who's meant to be this kind of lane dominator and getting a good early uh, start and lead. Shadow Shaman wrapping behind and Stop out to the Chrono. Snapfire launches the kisses onto GPK and they've brought numbers in again to slay the Viper. The big dragon down, but the trade-off is there. Shad falls as the Death Wall has secured the kill on Shadow Shaman. So the two for one and boom, he's got remnants. He's got a way out of here. Power shot off the mark. Save again, giving it a good old try. This should be the tower. They have and no chronosphere. Celery. Oh, celery. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, the DD are in from DM. Let it go to Epic Kid. And another secure tier one tower. Lagging a bit, Gary, but. Uh, oh, dear. Probably because you said something stupid, so Discord's like, nah, not today. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother transmitting his garbage. Shut him up. Maybe I'm lagging, but uh, you were pretty robotic to me. Let's check my ping, 40 ping. Everything seems uh, okay. So I'll be just solo casting this one. Save on the bottom. Yeah, this slaughter definitely not getting out of this one. Road of Atos plus Viper slowing him down. Should be more than enough. Ilias invading territory. Pretty deep, but gets the cask plus Maledic. Oh, we need to be careful. Phantom Assassin. Oh, just a casual RP on your position. Five. This is Void. Time dilation. Needs to back. Oh, they're gonna go on him. Like, blank strike. He actually goes on Boom. Boom. Dropping fairly low. Epic Kid. Kinda low on armor, but the Death Ward. One more tick. It's all it needs. And he finishes him off. With that dagger, trap with the wards, like Curtis Pro right now. Just to well, I can't heal the cost. In the map. We're having some problems. What do you think about this, Gary? You have Dyer's nothing to say, top. right? Because you, you are still disconnected. Viper to go back to his item. 
Finishing Road of Athos, casual arcane boots because he consumes so much mana. Now we're going back to the Lotus Orb. Like it's, right. Yeah. Welcome back, Gary. Thanks. Yeah, for some reason, one <laughs> one room in the same server is like no connection. The other room is like, yeah, it's perfectly fine. I mean, I just me. showed the world my play by play, so. Sick. For the next DPC season, a couple of casters should be afraid because I'm that versatile. Just kidding, that's pretty garbage, but <laughs> welcome back to the game. So, yeah. If you don't know what happened, Virtus Pro. Oh, Shad. Not again. What's he done? He died. Oh dear. Well, he's got the Iron Talon, Hand of Midas, he's farming creeps. Look it up there. A PA with 9,000 net worth though, Mom, Desso. When is it roast time for VP? It feels like they can literally just walk into the pit and do it while Chrono's uh, potentially down. Oh, Shad's got it back up. Scan, connect, so they think there's a bunch of them, but they're actually inside the pit, and here's your answer, Gary. I don't think they're gonna take this fight. Shad. Like, look at the vision. From Virtus. Yeah, the Radiant Pro. Observer Ward's all over the place. They see everything. Actually, moving out of the Roche Pit now. Blink Dagger on Slarder, ready. Okay, Smoke Virtus coming in. Not heavily committing. Save on the high ground. Pops the smoke. Sees them all. Initiation in. Toby blinks. Gets the stun. The catch on Windranger, but she's got Windrun. Tries to sprint away. And now in comes a skewer with an RP play. DM's there with a cleave she coming through. Happy Kid with a double kill. Mortimus Kiss is landing from Snapfire. Long range artillery, but GPK on a killing spree. And Viking just falling apart at the seams. Four heroes for the price of one. And now it's easy Roshan time. Yeah, even if that fight was, like, close, Windranger has a buyback, would <clears throat> gladly use it. Yes, GPK is just a monster on Viper at the moment. Yeah, beastly performance from GPK. 10-2-0. Not, not a single assist, he's just like, all of the kills are mine. Disgusting Viper pickers. Boom. Phase drums back into the mid lane. He's pretty speedy. I don't know if you can run from the demons of Virtus Pro as Roshan and Aegis grabbed up by the Phantom Assassin. And DM's also halfway towards Blink after Arcane's mech, 16 minutes in. Celery. They, I think they know he's up here. They saw him a second ago. GPK is trying to close him off at the pass. And they won't find him. Hidden very well in the trees. Cut the trees with. Meanwhile, Epic Kid is casually deleting Aramis. Absolutely removed. And Boom and Toby are the, still lurking around in the mid lane, maybe thinking about going on save. Uh, just trying to cut waves instead. Salary's out of there from the top lane. And VP come back in, converging towards that tier two. Dragon scale for the Phantom Assassin, gonna help burn through that tower's HP. Dyer's top tower has fallen. They will take the outpost, go mid. Take the tower. Uh, Phantom Assassin already on the bottom lane. Faceless Void needs to be careful. Look at it go! He sure does. Oh, if he shows, he's dead. Like, Windranger has a good angle. Shackle shot. Not coming fast enough. They don't catch Shad. He's gonna TP away. Radiance bottom we still need to see this attack. Chrono with Mortimer's Kisses. They're Radiance both ready. I would love to see killed. Viking just try and put the foot down a little bit and say, hey, you come into our jungle, we are going to cast our ultis on you. From above. They spawn out the Snapfire. Shockwave connects. Keep the Dire Vision going as Rodobatos is there. Now, the big Chrono. Two men caught inside with the Kisses landing. It's a good play from Viking. Holding onto their high ground, defending their base. And the mech and the heal. GPK finished off by Boom of the DD rune. Shad very low, burning down to the Maledictan. He does tick out. The Shackle Shot catches two from save. And he power shots through for an epic kid monster kill. Toby slain by the Wind Ranger. And Boom, what's he going to do? He's got a double damage rune, but he's got no teammates to play with. Yeah, Magnus was forced to use mech there to keep them alive and did not have enough Dyer's mana for no skewer, no RP. So that's why this fight seemed a bit closer. Vendranger looking for the shackle angle. Now he goes on salary. That's an easy one. 
Godlike PA905. Epic kid just run away with this. He's got his. They want to go thing. more. Shackle. Yeah. Dodged. It's still gonna jump him though. Bremden. Boom. Gets a little bit of distance. Epic kid. Kind of desperate for this one. If he can finish him off. The casual sound on the Phantom Assassin. Oh, it could be, this would be just, just you know, Heaven's Halberd could be just a Dyer's casual sand help. for extra HP, extra status resistance, and heal amplification that you have with Mask of Madness. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to buy BKB right now. I just want to tank up for a, when you do catch me in Chrono. A play towards the Witch Doctor, but a nice Maledict Skewer forces Remnant back. Dyer's bottom tower. Even a Veil up on the Amber Spirit, too. Maybe he's got Flame Guard to tank himself up. And Viking, without Chrono for a minute, just doesn't feel like they have any real ways to kick off a fight. Look at this smoke. Where are they going? And connects. They saw him. They know he's there, so he's just gonna RP blindly. Hell yeah! That's just destroyed, boom! Easy tier 2 for VP now if they want to. But look at save, he's still smoked up and he's actually wrapped around quite deep. Hexed, zapped by the ether shock. No follow up from anybody. Viking very afraid of what's lurking over the over the high ground there. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Full BKB on Phantom Assassin. Kind of okay with the item build because Aegis will expire in less than a minute, and you want to keep the pressure going so you don't have to worry about the Shadow Shaman. He goes in. Oh my God! He almost kills him. Dagger will do. He's gonna get jumped and power shotted. Easy peasy. And it's just a lane of barracks. There's nothing there Viking can do. Like, yes, you've got Chrono, you've got Mortimer's Kisses. One more fight might just be all they have up their sleeve right now. Melee, Rax, falls. Shad, standing by his throne. Not even going to try and defend it. Waiting for VP to make another misstep. I'll say another misstep. Trying to make any misstep. This is pretty clean, executed game so far from Virtus Pro. Not too many mistakes made. Like, where's this old gold coming from? That's a full BKB. Oh, Phantom Assassin Courier died once again. Really? So she's not gonna have BKB for a, another two minutes. Stuck with the sand. Got killed. Here comes Viking. Twice in a row. They're going to try and raid the shores of Virtus Pro. See if they can go pillage some high ground and triangles. Th this is actually a good time for Viking to take a fight because there's 4,000 gold on Phantom Assassin missing. Pretty good spot to be in. But they won't find anybody. They come down into this radiant jungle. VP have kind of moved up to the northern side of this mid lane. PA all blurred up and powered as well. The Rod of Atos dodged out by Boom and now the Kisses with the Chrono landing on GPK. He's tanky but he can't withstand that kind of power as the RPD comes through. They've tried to blow up Shad. Save jumps forward aggressively. They've got a Shackle shot and a Shackle's there. Toby down and GPK with DM both traded back. It's a good play in from Viking but it's still Epic Kid beyond godlike and annihilating every other member of them. Remnants out from the Ember Spirit. They do have a cast coming if they can only close the gap and there's the blink another nice play by boom it's tough i mean viper dies yeah he's tanky but can't uh, tank all that damage inside a chronosphere he might also start i, I see aghanim scepter queued up but um I, I don't know how you can save yourself maybe you can try to save people with the ethereal blade but then again radiance bottom tower has giving a free damage from Mortimer's Kisses, this is the combo that the Viking wants to use. <laughs> I mean, if this was stops, and pretty sure that yeah. would be an E Blade no matter what. Oh, for a second there, I was wondering why the hell Magnus has a Basher. Basher belongs like, to Epic Kid. 
Yeah, he, his career is constant. Shackle shot, finds RMS. Shad's come in with a ton dilation, the blink away from save, and the RP fake pump is going to catch in onto Shad now. They've got the stuns they need, but where's the damage? It's lacking because Epic Kid's been shackled up by Aramis, held in place, and the PA is about to die. Yeah, Epi is about to die. Epi is about to die, but still stays alive. Comes in with a crit of the void. He survived. Not today. The Lotus Orbs under the Magnus now. Yes, he got the Hex up on him, but stuck on the high ground is the Hex turnaround onto Aramis. Celery stuck now, trapped in between them all, and a triple kill for Epikid, as I really thought they dispatched with a PA, but it wasn't to be. Down goes the Shadow Shaman, being melted by the toxins of this Viper, and an ultra kill for Epikid, only removed away from the Rampage because of GPK. I mean, it... Could have been a bit of a different fight if they managed to bring down the Phantom Assassin, but she blinks in, gets a couple of crits, life steals. Like, her basher was delivered before the BKB that she bought like six, seven minutes ago and still has 2,000 gold on top of that. Dyer's middle tower. Incredibly farmed. Dyer's top tower. She's doubling up on the net worth of the void. And now they go back in towards Aramis. The kisses towards Epikid, but now the BKB comes into play and Shad nearly gets annihilated by that PA. Facing off against Boom, but Phantom striking back to the safety of her squad. Good slight chains in the crush from Toby. Take down the Witch Dog to Ilias Falls and GPK. Trying to fight within his own nether toxin, but the cookie's there. They've got the melee barracks, but they've got to try and get away from this. There's Toby being focused by that fire from the Wind Ranger, but Shad with Boom holding onto their base with everything they've got. Could have blinked away, but uh, wanted to go maybe for a kill. Still. I'd say okay fight for Viking where they managed to kill Radiant three guys Australia. still lost the melee Ultimate barrack so not that great but they have to stay positive considering the situation they're in right now stay positive positive attitude BMA. don't know if you can do that with a, a PA on the enemy team being a phantom assassin now with an abyssal blade coming Jeez Louise, 20,000 net worth, Roshan alive in 28 seconds. Prono with kisses, not ready. 40 seconds for the ulti of Celery. Boom, scouts out Magnus though, and they do make a play forward, but look at the jump in, the Ursa Blade, the stun for the catch is there. Well done, with an RP dodge from the Illusion Rune, Boom makes a play, but it's just not enough. He's bloody dead anyway. It looked like he dodged it, but didn't. <laughs> Oh, did the RP still... I, I thought he dodged the RP and then got stunned by, like, a cask or something. Oh, maybe, maybe the RP maybe did land. Maybe it. Cause... I don't know, it's getting late, man. I can't tell anymore. <laughs> I was just checking out the crits from Phantom Assassin. Can't say yeah. uh, for sure that they're pretty high. Dyer's top barracks. Pretty yeah, damn high indeed. Still chasing. Celery, you keep it good, home. That's a good place. Wow. Really great spot. Roshan's up now, though, for Virtus Pro. Two Viking core heroes dead, so easy Aegis cheese. Mid lane all gone, top lane Malarax down, range racks on 200 HP. This feels like the door's opening towards end game, and Viking have probably only got maybe one, two fights left in them. If, if there's buy uh, do, is there buybacks anywhere? Nobody's got any buybacks. I don't know if you noticed, Gary, but the Wind Ranger has Mask of Madness. The song has what? <laughs> the That's a meme. Oh, that's a meme for sure. Meme of madness. I need more attack speed on Wind Ranger because focus fire isn't enough. Save says sorry. <laughs> Celery taking out a little stack for himself. And then dying for it. <laughs> Get out of here. You are so distant. So Phantom Assassin, zero deaths, 19, zero, and seven. <laughs> Ah, maybe he's just yeah, on another level. When yeah. they can jump, are they jumping GPK? That's a Dagon, Cheese, Lotus Orb, Rodovatos, Viper. Okay, Blink Crush, Serpent Wards, Shackles. They're doing it. They're killing him. They've got GPK. They take down a core hero. But the rest of EP are coming forward. The cavalry's arriving now. Viking in a spot of bother as DM does catch Toby with a shockwave. Blink back into the trees. Mm, DM with the skew where it's ready now. Oh, doesn't quite catch him. Both Viking heroes escape. Really nice, swift maneuver. Phantom Assassin's like, I don't need this sand at all. So I'm just going to keep it in the backpack. 
Not even going to sell it. <laughs> going satanic next as well. Oh, baby. Viking. Drastic Dyer's measures are, are required. Attack. Kisses Chrono. Has fallen. But no serpent wards. Top lane destroyed. Have to deal with these lanes, but they also need to make a real desperate move out of the base to find a fight somewhere. Now, good thing for Viking is you know from which angle they're gonna enter. Like, you lost two set of Raxes, so you kind of know where they're gonna go. I mean, it should be that bottom lane. Oh, Celery. Dyer's bottom tower oh, okay. PA doesn't want the free kill. Instead, focusing on objectives. VP, it is bedtime. Dyer's bottom they want to put this one and tuck it in. Get to sleep. Tier 3 tower now opens up for them. And there's an empty kid straight back onto the high ground. Backup plans of Aegis and BKB, as well as this Blink RP of Magnus, who is smoked up and ready to make the jump. They're pinging onto Boom, and they might make that play. Abyssal Blade there, Shockwave as well. The Toby Slardar makes the play into Wardilius and DM. And now, close the Chrono, Chad, he's got the jump. So, Mormus Kisses, they're coming in, it's just not enough damage. They've killed off DM, but this PA is still running rampant. The buyback from the Witch Doctor and Shad caught up inside the Rod of Atos. Epikid, the jump in again, down you go. I was waiting to use this. Shadkle. <laughs> you know, but the, 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 they were focusing Dyer's Ember Spirit most of the time with it, so finally they get him. Radiant Thank you for that. The assassin shoots in with the Lotus Orb. Very deep. Still has Aegis though, so Epica not really minding too much as she slays the Celery Snapfire. Time walk away from Shan, but the Phantom Strike is back in again. The Shackles, the Long Tongue of Law. Yeah, lick it The Chameleon. <laughs> Oh, he sure does. And now PA a little deep. The Hex comes from Aramis, but there's no damage to really follow through. Shackles again landing it onto the PA and Shad trying to make the move forward. But the Phantom Strike back and the blur's there. Epic Kid retreats while Boom, he has respawned, returned to battle. Moves forward with the chains, catching the Witch Doctor. Epic Kid and GPK, really the two last bastions of defense. But they still have they still have DM with a blink RP. He's actually TP to top outpost and he's running back across the map. And Phantom Assassin, full Dyer's HP, full mana, just Dyer's hit level 25, 100% extra coup de grace. Oh. Thanks again. Oh, but the Lotus Orb, the Abyssal Blade, in we come with a DM Magnus, trying to, uh, okay, RP the ground, I guess, but it looks like Boom has been zapped down by the Dagon of GPK. Shand into Fountain, Celery hiding away in there as well, and Vertus Pro, uh, Pro are playing with their food. This is it, Gary. I believe it is time to call it Mega Creeps. You have uh, no buyback on the Ember Spirit. It's just a rough one. And there it is, GG. double G's dropped. Yeah, a 2-0 like, victory. Has Mid lane was a disaster. GPK got the, too much out of it. Like, they showed the Ember Spirit, uh, picked it blindly, and uh, yeah, Viper really dumpstered them in the lane. Like, took the tier 1 tower, then rotated to the bottom lane. They got some really good kills. Even the trades that Viking was doing was pretty much always Ilya's position 5 for a bigger kill, and then Phantom Assassin gets the solo XP for that, so... Everything from Vardis Pro looking very crisp.